here we have a cylindrical grindstone where it's a pretty heavy stone that spins around kind of like that around the axis and you can use that to grind and sharpen various things. So we're dealing with a cylindrical shape inside of spheres all the time. Not a big deal, just looking at the different moments of inertia. But then the problem also goes into what to do when you have other forces and therefore torques at play. And how does that play with the um, energy that we can figure out? If you don't remember as much about torque, be patient. We will cover torque in more detail. And then hopefully when you come back to this, it'll make a little more sense. In any case, part A, we're just looking for the kinetic energy, which for rotation is given by one half I omega square. In this case, the axis does indeed go right through the center. So there's no parallel axis theorem required. So we just look up the correct moment of inertia. It is of course a solid cylinder. So we see saw cylinder here and saw cylinder here, but very critically, which one do we use? Then it depends on your rotational axis. It's drawn in an axis right here like that, telling us that this is gonna rotate around here like this, whereas this one rotates like that. Now grindstone rolls like a wheel and not flip around like a coin. So in this case, this is the one we're gonna use, right? So choosing the right shape from the table and also choosing the correct axis of rotation. 1 half mr square uh, for the omega, they're giving us rev per minute or RPM sometimes, right? Sometimes people will say RPM for revolution per minute. So this is a very typical unit conversion that we do. And we do it like we always do. We want radians per second in the end. So we multiply by a series of ones. So we want to get rid of the revolution and we want radians on top. So how many radians per revolution going through one circle? two pi radians. And we want to get rid of the minute to introduce seconds on the bottom. So we put the 60 underneath. Some people like to carry the pi around. Doesn't really matter with me. So you get the number right here. So then we actually plug in the numbers now. That's one half and then another one half for the MR square. The radius we convert to meters as well. So roughly 888 joules for the rotational kinetic energy of the grindstone. Part B, we're given, here's the wheel. Let's say it rotates like that. We press against it with something. So there is a normal force. And since the wheel rubs, kind of moves to the left at this contact point here, the friction must point to the right. So now that there's forces at play here, we can talk about how there's work involved, right? And that's why they ask us specifically to use the work energy theorem. The work energy theorem is a fancy name for this thing involving all the energy, which I sometimes call the energy balance. In this case, the height isn't changing, right? The center of mass is held fixed at the axis. So those aren't gonna have any effect. It comes to a full stop at the end, so that's gone. So and we're really trying to figure out work, right? Other forces on this object is you have your mg and then the pin holding it will have some reaction forces, rx and ry. So we have to look at all the forces. This one we don't care because it's a conservative force. These two things, um, no delta d, so then we can ignore those things as well. But we still have two forces that can do work which is good because we need that to be non-zero to uh, actually make the equation work. Now work, as we used to do it, involved this dot product, right? Just F dot delta D. But hopefully it wouldn't surprise you that there is a rotational equivalent form that we replace the displacement with angular displacement, and then we replace force with torque. Now that we are talking about torque, torque is defined with a cross product, R cross F. R being the displacement vector from the rotational axis to the point where the force acts. With cross products for the Fn case, because your R vector is parallel with your Fn vector, so 
that's not going to get you any cross product and therefore no torque. The normal force just presses against the wheel. It doesn't make it spin faster or slower. It is the friction though. The friction is going to be perpendicular. So the torque for the friction would be R times the friction force. Completely, right? Cross product. But we should also specify the direction so that we can take the dot product properly later on. For our corner axis, it's important to have a right-handed corner system where I cross J gets you K. So Z is coming up. And using quote unquote the first right hand rule, the torque you can see based on the friction force, you see that the torque should go clockwise. So finger swirling clockwise, thumb goes into the page, that's negative k hat for the torque direction, which stands for rotating clockwise in this case. FF of course is mu k f n, so we can sub all that in there. Again, we will go into torque in more details, so just hang tight. For the work term then, we have our frictional torque, right? It's important to make sure all this vector stuff is there and is there so we can do the dot product properly. And again, negative K just means we're going clockwise. The displacement though, the angular displacement, we're expecting to go clockwise, right? That would be positive K which is why we would end up with k dot k and therefore this negative remains and makes the work a negative number, which represents the slowdown and taking energy away from the system. So solving for delta theta, right, which is which will lead us to how many turns, the energy we already got from part A, right, the unit being joules on top and newton meters on the bottom, everything cancels out. So we do get no units, or therefore the units of radians, but they want number of turns, which is revolution. So we have to do a conversion again. Every revolution on top means two pi radians, still a good number of revolution. And so there's your final answer using kind of their terminology. Technically you could have done the whole problem using force and the distance around the outside, it's all equivalent. But since we are doing rotation, this is a good time to introduce the rotational form of the work, which is torque dot angular displacement. And then a quick first look at torque. 